initial days of my college i saw my new companion smoking cigarettes out of curiosity and my deliberate efforts to try to fit in coupled with false bravado of looking cool in front of those people i inhaled the smoke of crushed and burned tobacco leaves my initial thought was to just try it once and never smoke it again but in no time i was hooked i started partying hard bunking lectures lying to parents spending my time around bad influence people and spent almost all my money on tobacco and just within a span of 4 months i went from being a bright student to being one of the worst students who hardly attended any college lectures most of you could relate to this whether you are currently in college or in the professional world It's a no-brainer that tobacco is the cause of severe diseases like lung cancer, heart disease, stroke, asthma and many others which cost the life of almost 7 million people every year. Yet still the industry is booming. How can a product that is a threat to human life be widely accepted in our society? What kind of lobbying and marketing has enabled the industry to sell the products openly despite life-threatening consequences? Tobacco remains the number one preventable cause of death. Philip Morris International is the richest tobacco producer with a market capital of $176.2 billion. Every disease has its cure, but tobacco and tobacco-related illnesses aren't cured yet. In this video, we will deep dive into the tobacco industry. and learn how it is rising and taking over the world despite all these allegations tobacco was first discovered in north and south america and was seen as a painkiller within no time tobacco was popular all across europe due to its supposed healing property europeans believe that tobacco could cure anything even cancer To top that, a book written by a Spanish doctor claimed that tobacco can cure 36 health problems. I mean, could you believe tobacco that is now found to be the root causes of multiple health problems was marketed in its initial days as a cure for those diseases? It's similar to hiring the same hitman for protection who already has a contract to kill you. Well, tobacco became so popular that in many places people started even transacting in it. It became as good as money. equivalent to the current gold it was at its highest popularity when in 1776 american war tobacco was used as a collateral by france to finance loans to america but with the passage of time scientists started understanding the chemicals inside tobacco and realized nicotine to be an essential component in it they started realizing dangerous health effects of tobacco but ignoring the scientific speculations companies like philip morris rj renol tobacco and american tobacco were established If you've ever smoked cigarettes and tried to quit, you know how incredibly tough it is to break the habit. That's what happened to at least four of the actors who played him. Four dead actors. It's like if there was a gas leak on whose line is it anyway. They targeted at the black community because the black community they felt was more vulnerable to cigarettes. By 1901, 3.5 billion cigarettes and 6 billion cigars started selling per year. The popularity of tobacco could be seen by the fact that in 1900 the world population was approximately 1.6 billion which equates to almost 6 cigarettes and cigars per living person. But it was just the starting. During World War 1, the usage of cigarettes exploded as cigarette was marketed as a soldier's smoke. Companies like Philip Morris and American Tobacco started investing heavily on branding and positioning their products. Philip Morris positioned Marlboro as a woman's cigarette also called as mild as me while American Tobacco also started positioning its cigarettes to women capturing 38% of the market During World War II the cigarette sales were all time high Cigarettes were considered as a major part of soldiers rations similar to food Tobacco companies sent millions of cigarettes to the soldiers for free and when these soldiers came back home after the war the companies had a steady stream of loyal customers so the growth of tobacco industry kept accelerating coupled with the marketing and branding efforts during world war 1 and world war 2 even during 1920s when the first medical report of linking smoking to lung cancer appeared 
but newspaper editors refused to report these findings as they did not want to offend tobacco companies who sponsored their media houses. It was just a matter of decades when major medical reports started surfacing out, confirming that tobacco causes a range of serious diseases. In the early 1950s, the US tobacco industry found itself besieged by the concerns about the safety of its product as a result of new medical evidence conclusively linking smoking and cancer. The tobacco industry then started heavily investing in research to prove the claims wrong, but their own research began to find carcinogens in smokes and begin to confirm the relationship between smoking and cancer. They were left with two options whether to admit the health problems of the product and apologize for the death of millions or do everything in their power to keep selling death to people. Well, they went with the later. So in the face of mounting damning evidence against their product, the companies responded by creating doubt and controversy surrounding the health risk, while at the same time responding to the growing public concerns by putting filters on cigarettes and promising research into the health effects of smoking. They lured the smoking public into a false sense of security because while this had the hallmarks of responsible companies acting in the public interest, it was actually a public relations strategy to buy time at the expense of public health. Until the mid-1950s when industry scientists started accepting privately about the health problems of smoking. British-American tobacco scientists even gave a code name Zephyr to lung cancer and use the code name to link cancer and smoking in its internal communication, while on the other hand, the game of public denials continued. One executive of RJ Reynolds was even caught saying, we don't smoke that shit, we just sell it. We just reserve the right to smoke for the young, the poor, the black and the stupid. The industry came up with this strategy to mislead the government and the public and sell their products by stating the main ingredient of the cigarette nicotine as non-addictive and non-harmful, but research states that nicotine causes adverse effects on the brain and central nervous system similar to cocaine and heroin. The internal documents reveal that the industry knew they were actually in the business of selling nicotine packaged in the form of cigarettes. They knew that removing nicotine from cigarettes will demolish the addictive nature of the product, which in turn will lead to reduced customers. Some companies even modified their approach and accepted the addictive nature of nicotine but justified it with comparing the addictive nature of browsing internet, shopping, having tea or coffee. According to them, consuming tobacco isn't addictive but habit forming, similar to these activities. There is a fundamental flaw in the business model of the tobacco industry as two-thirds of its customer base die due to the product's adverse effect. So companies are always in the hunt of acquiring new customers to keep their business sustainable and what better customers than teenagers who have their entire life ahead and can act like a lifelong source of revenue to the companies. Publicly, the tobacco companies always say that they do not market their products to children, yet independent surveys show that 60% of the smokers start by the age 13 and almost 90% starts before the age 20. Teenagers are a key battleground for the companies. The companies know the importance of hooking a teenagers to their brand and getting lifetime loyalty out of them. This is a paradox to the tobacco industry that it is not legally and morally acceptable to market their brand to teenagers but the companies have to do that in order to replace the dead loyal customers with the potential loyal young teenagers. In 2016, tobacco companies in the US alone spent around 9.5 billion US dollars in marketing and that too after tons of regulations by the government on the marketing of its products. It equates to 26 million dollars spent every day for marketing in the US alone. The tobacco company states that its advertisements are not meant to gain new customers but to get more market share within the existing customer base. They say that the advertisements are aimed to build brand loyalty and not to persuade people to smoke. It is utter nonsense as the output of every marketing activity leads to increased consumption of virtually any product. But how can this marketing function miraculously fail to work for tobacco products? 
In actual, the tobacco companies maintain their reputation as socially responsible companies by giving utopian statements, but in reality, their web of marketing is deeply rooted and they always find innovative and creative ways to promote their products and acquire new customers. Bars and nightclubs continue to be the major venues for experiential marketing. The friendly social ambience of a pub or social club encourages smokers to smoke more heavily than usual and contribute to a great deal of enjoyment of smoking. This is a type of marketing which helps companies transition from experimentation to loyal customers among young adults. The tobacco industry understands the importance of films and has been leveraging it successfully to associate its product, particularly cigarettes and cigars, with the success, wealth, fun, excitement and power. Cigarettes and cigars usage in movies and television is a subtle and powerful form of promotion. Internal leaked documents of the tobacco industry states that movies and serials are high return on investment as the companies acquire loads of new customers within a short span of time. People want to live the lifestyle of celebrities. Lifestyle that includes success, wealth and power. One of the ways to attain that is using the same products as used by their favorite celebrities. Major target audience here are teenagers who could be easily turned into lifelong loyal customers by hooking them through films and TV shows. Series like Mad Men, Peaky Blinders and films like James Bond, Godfather are some of the prime examples of it. The motive of this video is to create awareness among the general public regarding the tactics implemented by the tobacco companies to hook you into their products and turn you into a smoke addict. Stay safe and keep watching Pants Documentary.